students, today's agenda is to go over homework, solve systems by graphing, we're finally going to get to the solving the equations, and your assignment will be 5.4. Uh, today's students will be able to find the solution of a system of equations by graphing. And so, um, before I go into the graphing part, I want you to know that there are going to be uh, different types of solutions and I'm just going to introduce them right now. You might not encounter them in this lesson or you might, but the more you listen about it, the more you get familiar with it. So sometimes when you're graphing equations, and I'm going to give you an example in here, let's say that you have these two equations, um, you can find the solutions in three different ways. Today we're just gonna uh, learn how to find the solution by graphing. And by finding the solution, it means that if I graph the two lines, where will these two lines meet? And they might meet at this point, which is gonna be one solution. And you are gonna give me the value of x and the value of y. And again, we'll get to that once we start. You might get something like this, where my lines are going to be parallel. And it doesn't matter the direction, but they will never meet. And so you cannot tell me which coordinate they're going to meet up because they can't. So you're just going to write no solution. And finally, we have a set where you have a line like this. And then you might have the other line exactly, even though they might be different equations, they are going to overlap. And so we call that infinite solutions. It means that if I choose any point, it meets with the point of the other equation. If I choose a different point, then they are that point of the first equation meets with the point of the second equation, okay? So one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. So take a minute to take notes of that. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom, zoom in so that you can see. The numbers in there and let's see maybe I'm zooming in. so I'm gonna zoom in and then I'm gonna zoom out so that I can show you the work but these numbers are going by twos so you have a negative two negative four negative six negative eight but the squares are by neg by one so one two three four in the negatives zero one two three four okay so the squares are going by one by one but um, okay, and let's begin with the first one. So this is going to be also kind of like a review for, I believe it was 4.7, because you already know how to graph this. Um, that's why in the last lesson we were manipulating the equation so that we can leave it in y equals mx plus b to make it easier for us to graph. So remember from 4.8 that this is our initial point. Okay, and it's always the y-intercept. And over here, you will have what is called the slope which is rise over run. Okay, so I hope it didn't get that messy, <laughs> um, but it's one over two. So my initial point is five, so I'm gonna go up five since it's positive, one, two, three, four, five, and that's my initial point, my first point. It's always on Y, okay? and. This is the change on y over the change on x. So it's going to go up 1 because it's positive, and then it's going to run 2. And it's going to go to the right because it's also positive. Now remember that 
the slope is repetitive, so it's going to be 1 over 2. 1 over 2. 1 over 2. And if you go on the other side, it will be negative 1 over negative 2 to make it positive. Negative 1 over negative 2. Negative 1 over negative 2. So it's the same pattern. You wouldn't go up, right? Because it wouldn't be a linear equation then. Um, now for the other line, let me see if I can find a blue pen. Okay, I'll just use this. Um, so let me draw that line first and then I'll go with the other one. See how repeating that slope makes it easier to graph because you can guide yourself with all the points and not only one. Okay, for the other line, again, this is my initial point, which is positive 3. So 1, 2, 3, and I draw the point. And for my slope, it has two numbers, but I only need one point. That helps me get to the second point, but I have to trouble my the change on y and my change on x. So we go up 3 and 2 to the right. Up 3 and 2 to the right. And I think that's enough because we can see that the two lines are going to overlap right there at that one point. So if I continue in here, it would be negative 3, negative 2, negative 3, negative 2. So it will be help, helpful to do several because you can see that I, I didn't have those to guide me. And so it's a little crooked, right? Um, so this is what we're looking for. Where does the, where do the two lines meet? And my one solution would be at 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So X is 2, Y is 6. So 2 and 6. That's where my two lines meet and so that's my one solution right two six that's my solution okay let's do another one uh, again if you need to pause it go ahead and do that so that you can take note so we have another one here and my initial point is at three so it's gonna be one two three that's my first point. And then I notice that my slope is negative. Remember that that negative is going to go either to the right or the run, but you cannot do it to both, only one. And I'm going to give it to the one in here. So if the one is negative, my rise is going to go down. That means that the sun sets. <laughs> so negative one. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> my run is going to be 3. So rise over run will be negative 1, but then positive 3, which is to the right. Okay? Don't think that because this is negative, you're going to go down and also to the left. That will make it incorrect. You're giving the negative to both, and that's not what it is. You only give it to one of them. Okay? Down 1. 3 to the right, 1 down, 3 to the right. And if we go in the opposite direction, it will be like this. When we go to the opposite direction, it means that you're basically putting one positive, but then the negative is being um, given to the 3, right? One positive, but then the 3 is negative. One positive, but then the, the negative is given to the 3, okay? And so that's my first line. And now the other graph and you can use the two intercepts but for today I'm just gonna ask you that you manipulate it uh, but if you know how to use the the zero zero that's fine you can use that method um, I'm gonna just manipulate it to leave it as y equals mx plus b I'm going to subtract 
through uh, 3x from both sides. And so we have negative 5y equals negative 3x minus 15. From yesterday's lesson, remember, or the previous lesson, remember that this cannot be combined. You just keep the negative 3x and the negative 15 because this does ha not have a variable. We divide both sides by 5, and so my y is equals to negative divided by negative is positive. 3 over 5 cannot be simplified, so you just keep it as 3 over 5. And negative 15 divided by negative 5 is positive 3. Okay, so basically in here, when we're dividing, we're dividing each one. It looks like a pretzel, right? So this first... And the only thing that got affected was the signs, and then this second. Okay, so this is this equation is the same as this one, and so when I graph it, I'm I'm gonna know where the two lines meet, where the system of equations has its solution. So the first one is three, the initial point. So one, two, three. Then I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and 5 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where my line is. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So, since we already have the point where it meets, that's going to be plenty. Um, but if you want more points to guide you, you can go ahead and do the negative 3, negative 5. Negative 3, negative 5. Okay, so my solution will be at, again, it's going to be one solution only, one solution, no infinite solutions or no solution, and it's going to be at 0 for x, 1, 2, 3, 4, y. So 0 for x, and then 3 for y. Okay. Now, if you wanted to use the intercepts, basically what would you have to do? All you have to do is replace zero with, uh, x with 0. This disappears. Divide both sides by negative 5. And so your y is negative 15 divided by negative 5, positive 3. You cover the other one, negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5 and those are your two intercepts um, but again you saw that in module in module L so maybe that that help you kind of remember that okay one more example oh both of these are in standard form and not in slope intercept so we're gonna have to change both equations and let me see, do I have enough space for both? Maybe I can do one first and then the other one here. So we have negative x plus 2y equals negative 12. Add x to both sides. 2y is equals to x minus 12. Divide both sides by 2. Whoops. And my y is equals to, when we have x divided by 2, you're going to have one half of x. It's like... If we have an orange divided by two people, you get one half of the orange, right? Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. So that's the first equation. Now let's see if you can, we can fit the other one in here. So it's x plus 2y equals negative 4 minus x minus x. 2y equals, again, these are not like terms, so I'm just going to write it down like this. And I divide both sides by 2. So my y is equals to negative x divided by 2 is negative 1 half x. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So I think you can see it from there. Um, but maybe I'm just going to transfer them in here so that I can work with the two of them over here. So the second one is going to be y equals negative one half x minus two. That's my second equation. Okay, and so I start graphing. Um, 
initial point, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 6, and then go up 1 to do the right, up to do the right, up to do the right, up to do the right, up. Notice how I don't put any points when I go up, only when I go to the right or to the left, okay? And let's see if that's enough. The next one is negative 2, is my initial point. And then I go down 1 and 2 to the right. 1 down and 2 to the right. Oh, that's where they're going to meet. 1 down and 2 to the right. 1 down and 2 to the right. So that's my two lines and that's my solution right there. Again, you can you can put the two arrows in here to indicate that this go on forever or not. But today, what we're looking for is the solution, meaning the place where they meet. And so x is four, and y is negative four. Okay. Um, so that's it for today. I hope this video helps and now you can work on 5.4.